Hey everybody, welcome to another Good E-Reader video comparison. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we are going to compare the Kobo Glow against the new Kobo Aura HD. And during this video, we're going to compare the illumination settings. And this is the first thing that we're going to do. But we'll also show you how the UIs change, the keyboard, the overall e-reading experience, and hardware and software. So as you can see, we're in, a, we're in a more or less completely dark room. And we're going to turn on the glow functionality via the top button on the Kobo Glow. It's about half, and as you can see, it's, it looks a little bit bluish. It's not completely white. Now we're going to turn on the Kobo Aura HD. As you can see, the it's at the same sort of settings as the Kobo Glow, but the white is very noticeable. This is, looks a little bit sort of purplish, bluish. This almost is on par if not a little bit better than Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. So let's configure some of the sliders a little bit and, and show you how the different illumination levels look and function in real world conditions. Starting off, we're going to turn these all the way to the bottom. So that's at 1%. And that's at as far as it can go to the left. You can see that this remains very bright, which actually can affect battery life, whereas this one is almost as close to being off as possible. Uh, we're then going to turn them up to half as we had them. You start to see the whites becoming a little bit more blue. The black becomes almost purple. And if we turn that up to full, get a lot more discoloration, especially a lot more ghosting here on the Kobo Glow. Whereas on the Kobo Aura HD, very white, very consistent. It's not as bright as the Kobo Glow. We all know the Kobo Glow has uh, pretty much the brightest glow light compared to, say, the Cyborg Odyssey, Nook Simple Touch with Glow, Paper White, and now the Kobo Aura. But, I mean, it's about the quality, not really how bright it is. So Yeah, as you can see, the UI's changed. You can see here that this is black, while the UI on the Aura is almost white. So you kind of don't see that color bleeding or anything like that. But I would say that Kobo... Uh, has really refined their glow light technology from the original Kobo Glow to the subsequent Aura that should be coming out at the end of April. Now we'll show you the hardware and tell you a little bit about what really makes these unique. Let's talk about hardware for a little bit just to give you a sense on what makes these two e-readers a little bit different. For one, this is a 6 inch screen. This is a 6.8 inch screen, so immediately you can see that this is a little bit larger than uh, the Kobo Glow. Uh, the resolution is also a huge difference. The Kobo Glow is 1024 by 758, and the Kobo Aura HD has 1440 by 1080. It actually has a better resolution than most tablets on the market, including the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 7 and the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. So as an e-reader, it actually has the best resolution out of this sort of class in the entire marketplace right now. And as you saw from our early nighttime reading test, that it actually has a better illumination for the front lit display. They both have a one gigahertz processor. The Kobo Glow actually has only two gigs of internal memory, while the Aura has four gigs, and they're both easily expandable. You can connect up to Wi-Fi, although it gets a little bit spotty at times, but Kobo has awesome support for different ebook formats, EPUB, PDF, text, as well as CBR and CBZ for comic book formats. Looking at the two devices, you don't really see too much difference in design. They have the thicker bezel on the bottom with the Kobo logo. Um, looks like they got rid of the little underline thing on the Kobo, but um, you notice that both of them are lacking the Kobo Touches button. So they're very similar in the way they look, especially with materials. We'll look at the Kobo Aura first. The screen is significantly larger, as we just uh, explained. You have a micro USB and a micro... SD card for expandable memory. We'll get into this little jagged design feature in a sec. And you have a micro USB as well on there. Hard reset button on the Kobo Aura. On the right side, nothing much going on there. The Aura is actually a little bit thicker because of its design. You can see there it's thinner at parts and thicker at other parts. On the top you have the power button, each on the left. 
and the status indicator light in the middle and the glow light button on the right. Now you can see that they've changed it to orange so there won't be any more confusion between which button does what. Then on the left side you have the micro SD card slot on the Kobo Glow and the Auras has nothing on that side. Flipping it over to the back, you have the quilted back, little diamond argyle kind of pattern. And then on the Kobo Aura, you can see you have this bent metal-esque look to it. I think it's really cool, really cool design feature. And it becomes a little jagged and this actually it's not just by accident, it both look good, looks good and is practical because it conforms to where you would hold it like a book. Yeah, I mean, I really do think the Aura HD is a step up design-wise. I really like the way that it looks. It's it's fairly solid, so I don't have any complaints. I, I definitely think that Kobo, as an e-reader company, is certainly moving in the right direction by giving us different devices. A 6.8-inch inch e e-reader, there's no other e-readers in the market that are that size, and the high resolution really separates itself uh, from the herd. Getting into the software side of things now, you can see that the main menus look a little bit different. This is sort of the new generation of main menu. Basically shows you book covers of books that you've uh, opened recently, as well as links to your library, reading life, and everything like that as well as home buttons in the top right hand corner. You can see that the Kobo Aura, their main menu has really changed. It's dynamic. What this means is when you open books, when you open up a web browser, when you create custom shelves and, and things like that, all of this changes. So this is cool because it shows you a new awards that you've gotten lately. If you've say opened up the web browser and you were reading Read It or hopefully you are reading our website, goodyreader.com, uh, there'll be shortcut links for everything here so everything that you access uh, you know recently will be here so it's easier than to jump into two or three different sub menus everything is on the main page so I do like the direction that Kobo is moving in uh, for that so basically it's the same sort of thing you have reading life which basically gives you reading stats awards and achievements not much is uh, different there but well, let's show you the things that there are differences mainly it's in the settings menu and you can see here that this has changed too and I do like the way that the aura has uh, changed a little bit I think that the UI looks a little bit more sexier than this you know what I mean sexier indeed yeah so <laughs> interesting way to put it so you hit settings most things are the same Light sleep and power. You can configure when you want the battery uh, or it, when you want it to sleep and when you are reading at night when you want the glow light functionality to turn off. Both of these last about, about a month to about a month and a half with the glow light on or off and just casual reading. So m not much has really happened with the settings menu here, but you can see under extras that there are a few other things here. You get a couple more games and uh, you get the same web browser at the bottom but they've, they've added a couple more things for your enjoyment yeah just different types of games but the sketch pad is cool because it is a touch screen e-reader that you could actually uh, grab like a stylus and actually draw save and everything like you're drawing so most of the settings are consistent as well as uh, the library here so you can see same sort of menus you can go to books and you can see that by default, these are a little bit bigger, so you f you know you figure you have like six books here, where you have seven here, and yeah. you still have two more another row beneath. Exactly. So I I really dig that because um, I I really like effective use of screen real estate and being able to fit more things on the screen. Um, is important to me so of course with both e-readers you can uh, you know create your own shelves and things like that uh, which is cool um, it's very easy to jump into like different perspectives and things like that different sort of views I think that this gives you a little bit more bit a little bit more oomph and when this hits retail this is only going to be about hundred and sixty nine dollars or so in North America and you can actually pre-order the Aura HD uh, right now on shopereaders.com so 
create your own shelves being able to sideload in books is very important let's look at the reading experience and see you know head to head how these really sort of perform under real world conditions so you can open up a book here on each device Well, you oh, can see that the Aura <laughs> HD loaded the book up instantly while the Globe is a little bit sluggish. A lot more refined. So right now, you can really tell how much more of the screen is putting to better use. I mean, this is just, it's, it's a great size to have, 6.8 inch, and I'm surprised no one has thought about it before. Everyone just consistently goes with the 6 inches, but I mean, that it's almost an extra inch once you tally everything up, so... You can see page turns are very consistent. You get that blackout every couple pages. You can choose how often you want that to refresh. If you tap in the middle, you bring up the bottom font buttons. You have to tap at the bottom to bring it up. You have things like quick navigation and look up in book, like uh, table of contents. You see they switch those from left to right for some reason. I'm not sure why. You have font styles and extra options. We'll start with font styles. So you can see here, you have things like font size, line spacing, margins, and justification. Same with the Kobo Glow. Now keep in mind with side loaded books, you can change the font face, font size, but you are limited. Right, the line spacing and justification do not work on side loaded books. You, they will be here with the slider bar, but they won't function. As well with side loaded books, unlike most other e-readers, you can still access the dictionary, make notes, highlights, and annotations, right. which we'll show you in a bit. So go to the advanced. Nothing must just change between the two. You still get font size, weight, and sharpness, along with the glow with the same amount of options. Uh, the before and after looks are actually really interesting because you can change what the book was to what you want the book to be. And then you see we softened it up here, made it a little bit lighter, and then on this one we've heavily increased the size. So once we press apply, it's going to put those changes into effect and change the book accordingly. Yeah, so when it comes to the overall e-reading experience in terms of changing your fonts and font faces, font sizes, both of these devices actually allow you to load in your own font. So if you're not happy with uh, the many default fonts that Kobo offers, you can actually load in your own. So Times New Roman, Arial, most of the popular fonts you can just load into the font directory via the USB cable uh, plugged into your computer and copy your own fonts. So Kobo does a good job at appealing to novice users by giving you some easy options options to configure things via slider, but then also advanced options, side loading in your own fonts, uh, right. changing the weight, you know, things like that. They you cater know. to both crowds and notice that they put the advanced options under the advanced tab for the advanced users. Right. Okay. So let's check out some of the other settings in terms of, um, you know, highlights, uh, keyboards. How does that look? Right. Let's check that out. So we're going to press and hold on each of these devices and what it does on the Kobo Aura is open up a quick dictionary um, definition as well as that and you can further define it by clicking the dictionary open book at the bottom. You can search in book for other terms of that similarity or you can share on Facebook. So that's kind of cool. So what we're going to do is just extend these little anchors a little bit and we're going to highlight on both so those will become grayed out all right then if you press and hold once more what we're going to do is create a note on both and we will also compare keyboards while we're here so you can see the keyboards have changed this is a lot more uh, lighter of a gray behind with the uh, the letters pop a little bit more, especially because this is a big screen, you actually get a dedicated row of numbers. And it doesn't really, percentage wise, it doesn't really take up that much more of the screen than the Copos Glow does. And you figure that because this does have an internet browser, Facebook uh, integration, and 
a lot of other types of things that will require you to enter a password and as you know in this day and age a lot of passwords make you uh, use alphanumeric combinations and having that dedicated line of numbers allows you to easy have an easier time doing it rather than having to hit this to exactly. get the numbers here then hit back and hit you know shift for capitalizations and things like that so yeah it's all swell so not much has changed in that regard where you can still make notes and highlights and share on Facebook and change the font menus. It's, it's not so much the way they allow you to change it that has changed. It's the reading experience and the fact that this is a very large screen is the, that, that makes the most difference. Okay, so this, obviously the Aura HD is the highest resolution e-reader in the market right now. So it should give you a better experience when it comes to displaying pictures and image heavy content so what we're going to do is pull up uh, the AD&D monster manual and show you how PDFs look head to head on both of these devices so you can see sometimes on the Kobo Aura we've noticed that when you put a side loaded content in it doesn't format it properly and although it functions what you actually have to do is press the middle press this directional pad and then fit to height yes now given that we do have the aura the day it was after it was officially right, announced right. so this may not be indicative to the final firmware that gets onto the retail build at the very end of april so right th this, this may mind. change <laughs> so um you can see here that we do have we're going to get the same page uh loaded up here two pages away there we are. Okay. So you can already tell that this, the blacks are blacker. See how the black here is a little bit gray. This one's almost just completely devoid of color. And the bigger screen actually, this is actually larger yes, indeed. than this. Exactly. Okay, so PDFs, reflow, all that stuff is very important to readers because uh, obviously this text is too small to read. So uh, w let's demonstrate a little bit on how you can change up how it looks. Double tapping goes into a navigation mode. You can see here you have a mini map with a highlighted box telling you what you're going to land on once you let go. And once you do, it's going to render and you're left with the full resolution. Same with the Kobo Glow. Now something different you might have noticed, you see here poking out of the side, it's a page turn. So as you're navigating amongst the page and you say, oh, look at that, there's a page turn, you can actually click it and maintain all your level of zoom, whereas on the Kobo Glow has it too. Yeah, and I mean, this is something that a feature that a lot of users aren't familiar with or don't even know that they exist. Now this is important because when you read PDF documents, especially something that's like two or 300 pages and this is like a 150 meg file, you spend a lot of time finding that sweet spot with you know configuring it, the, the reflow and everything like that. And a lot of e-readers force you to uh, negate any change that you made when you turn a page. You often have to go to full full view, then turn a page, and then you know either pinch and zoom or find that sweet spot again. Uh, let's look at these just images side by side. I mean, of course, these aren't the you know the best art or whatever, but you can see how this is a little bit larger. Blacks are looking a little bit solid um, than this, but I mean. The Kobo Glow is not a slouch either. Its oh, resolution no. is fairly uh, one of the best in the market Absolutely. next to the Aura. So uh, PDF experience, uh, they both have uh, the same type of engine supporting it as well as the ability to you know, get that sort of guided view that shows you where in the document that you are because sometimes you can lose track. So that's good for uh, game playing materials, comic books, as well as more image heavy content, newspapers magazines manga exactly. you know things like that so we've showed you pretty well these two e-readers and everything that they have to offer we'd like to hear your thoughts on what you think of this comparison video or what you think of maybe some of the new changes that the Kobo or HD has you can comment on this video and we'll do our best to answer every question and you can check out all of our other videos at youtube.com slash goody reader and for a comparison of the Kobo glow versus the Kobo Aura HD. For goodyreader.com, my name is Michael. My name is Peter. And everybody take care.